All right, so let's, uh, let's bring this meeting to order around 6.05. Uh, and anybody have any questions or concerns about the minutes from our November meeting? If not, then... The motion to accept the minutes. Okay. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. So, all in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. And we'll move on to the financial statements. Okay. So, um, tonight you have nine warrants to sign, totaling $168,303.89. And, um, I, gave, I sent out the report, so if anybody has any questions, but I also at your place, the, um, at the last meeting, we utilized, um, you authorized us to utilize some school choice funds for a new position, and you wanted an update on the status of the school choice fund. So I provided that for you tonight at your seats. Um, and because we have not yet um, hired this person, I used an average salary starting January 1st, so whenever we actually hire the person and we know what their actual salary is and their starting date, this will change. Sure. Um, but right now we're looking like we're in good shape. We uh, right now are we have 106,809 more than we thought we were going to at this time last year when we were doing budget. So our school choice is in good shape. That projection is includes the number that you put in for the salary starting in January. Correct. These numbers so, included. Yes. So the projection is well above where where we thought we would be. Correct. Given that we're adding to it and still increasing. It. Right. And if he, and thirty four thousand of it, thirty five thousand of it is because the, the difference between what we projected our ending balance to be and what we ended up having as as revenue uh, in two thousand sixteen. So that accounts for thirty five of the hundred and six. Top, top right. Section. Yeah. What accounts for the rest of it? If I'm looking at this, it's are some positions the, or the the attrition staff, or the, No, it's not hire. attrition. We, uh, we've had, we've had, we always have a turnover of IAs in the summer, and when we lose an IA, we usually bring the new ones in at lower salaries. So we do get a savings there. And I think we did, oh, um, some of the other things, um, we did have a couple of new hires that came in lower uh, that were non our music teacher, I believe, is lower than when the person who left, and part of her is paid through here. Um, but then we added a day, uh, so that's right. I'd have to go back and really dig into what what I projected the salaries to be. Right. Oh, I know what it. I'm sorry. Go ahead. The 600 when we projected it, we didn't know what the set what the raises were going to be, and now we do know what the raises are going to be. So my estimate for the raise was higher than what we actually paid. So that that's a big part. Of it. Is you're showing 76 or so thousand less and that in, if it includes another that position that we voted last month and it's closer to 130,000 plus. year old. What's that? Right, half a year. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then it's good to see. Yeah. The other thing I wanted to point out, I, um, the chair of the school committee, and I don't know how current Desi is, so I don't know if it was Ken or uh, David, a letter went out saying that the town was not going to receive their money because the end of the year report wasn't filed. That was not true. I filed that on 10-6. I actually had Mr. Sharp sign it at the last meeting. They just, for some reason, the transmission never uploaded it to the portal. So I was never aware that it wasn't there until we got this letter this week. So we put the, we put the, I re-uploaded the files, and I'm waiting to hear from Mr. Sullivan if that means there will be no delay, and it should mean there will be no delay. But just in case, I don't know which one of you received the correspondence, I just wanted to make that publicly. Figured as much. <laughs> yeah. And that's money for school choice or something else? It's something else. They, oh. they, 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 they'll they stop the Chapter 70, the circuit seven. breaker, oh, really? everything. If you don't, if you don't file the report on yeah. time. Okay. All right. 
And I think my other items come up in the other areas, so that's all I have right now. Okay. Anybody have any questions yeah. for Patty? Mm -hmm. okay. Not so much questions, it's mainly a, a comment on the projection of school choice for FY17. Um, the projected balance in June would leave us, usually, usually we try and have a balance of around $50,000 as a contingency for the next school year, um, depending on obviously the budgeting process. But I would hope if we're close to $100,000, we might be able to find some initiatives within the school mm -hmm. to use the funds for what school choice was initially. Or Mr. Lesko, who's for. here to, to tell you well, about no, the maintenance I, project that I might understand. not be able to push off. No, I, I understand <laughs> that Mr. Lesko is here for a reason, but. It's not connected, it's just coincidental. <laughs> just coincidental, but, um, yeah. you know, it just, it, if, <laughs> if, the availability, if the ability is there, it would be nice to be able to consider it. Yeah, absolutely. So, Absolutely. Yep. We're yep. going to know more of them by the time. Let's go get Five minutes here. <laughs> okay. Um, and the next item on here was uh, public comment. Anybody have any public comment? Okay. Um, and then moving on to unfinished business. Nothing, I don't think. So on to new business, shall we go, let's skip around here, skip over school lunch and maybe go to the five-year facilities sure. plan so that we can okay. hear from Mr. Lesko and then maybe let's leave. Everything's going to be done? Okay. Idea. Thank okay. related projects. Um, I tried to put a, a, a timeline to them. Uh, the first ones in red um, are the ones that are listed on the second sheet that we'll move to that have numbers next to them. And then there's a group of pro projects that's two to five years that I see as relatively immediate things that we need to begin to think about. And as I get guidance um, from you folks, I will put better numbers on those. I have numbers for a lot of the projects, but A, you know, it's very difficult to do a sheet like this, especially for five schools, and, and get good numbers. And putting a number out there tends to, it gets a life of its own really quickly. So I have some amount of anxiety um, about putting out numbers that I haven't spent some time on. So, it, but it gives you a snapshot of, of what's really immediate, what's going to be an issue in the next couple of years and what we need to think of in the really long range. Right. Um, so with that said, unless you've got some real questions about the first sheet, um, I'll kind of talk a little bit of it. Well, let me tell you a, a little bit more about the first sheet. I did try to break it. You'll notice there, there's clumps of things with spaces in between. Yeah. What I tried to do was keep projects that were relatively similar. The first ones were just lumped together because they're all very high priority. Okay. The second bunch are, are mechanical systems, boiler related stuff. Yep. Um, the second one is interior things, uh, door finishes, that sort of thing. Yep. And we've got some outside stuff with parking and paving, and some emergency systems, smoke detection, generator, things like that. So they're all kind of 
lumped together in things that are, are relatively uh, similar. I have a question. Yep. The entry for your north drainage tied a storm drain. I thought we were doing that when we replaced the roof. I thought that was part of the roof. Um, that was pulled out by the town. What's that? What do you got? Party. It was pulled out by the town. But what part are you talking about? No. On, on, the, on the first page here, the, yeah. in the red, we've got entry foyer north drainage tied to storm drain. We had put that in our plan. Well, to act, act, let, me, let me give some background on that a little bit. Um, there is a, there, there's been a problem that's occurred once while I was here and several times before I actually came, where on the front of the school where that entrance is, at very limited times of the year, if it's spring, there's a lot of snow on the roof, a lot, and, and you get a, a rain and you've got melting snow and everything, they've actually had water back up into the school the from year. the front foyer. <coughs> okay. um, as part of the roof project, um, we talked about, and we, we talked about an ad alternate to actually build a dam there which was complicated because that entry foyer is is not physically connected to the building. They're two separate entities yeah. and they need to move independently. So we talked about having the designers for the roof um, design some sort of connection there. Mm -hmm. um, as we debated it, the town thought that that was not maybe the best way to do it. Mm -hmm. and kind of an expense that they didn't want to put on the roof project. Um, and another alternate to that, that is a little bit more definite and would probably be a better solution, is to, to, to tie that area, the, the gutters in that area, actually into, into one of the drains out here in the courtyard, which right. there are. And, it, and, and I had a price from a contractor to do that. It's not horribly expensive. Good. So that's, that's the whole story. Okay, good. Well, my, like my concern that. was not only the flooding, but in the winter what happens is the water pours right there and then it freezes, so we have a patch of ice right in front of the doorway because of this also, right. which is also a hazard. Yeah. Well, it'd be good to get it up, get it in the ground and up to the... Yeah, that's, yeah. that's a good project. You know, it'll have to be a summer project, but... but and maybe a, I saw something on redoing maybe the front out here if we're going to dig up a trench. Yeah, one side well, we other. certainly we want to do this before, before we do the exactly. front foyer. You're absolutely yep. right. Okay. Um, I think that whole cor courtyard is going to be expensive enough. It's going to take a couple of years to come up with the money to do it. Yeah. But certainly we want to dig that up and put that drain in before we do that. Right. You're absolutely right. Great. Okay. I can't thank you enough for this list. This is really good. Good work. So, you know, and, you know, I'll, if. I, I can run down these short projects and talk about them and tell you what they are. Um, sure. I wasn't expecting any real decisions tonight on any of this. Yep. I think it's a great document to begin to look at and hopefully it'll generate some discussion. Yep. You know, if, if, if you see things on there you think I'm moving in the wrong direction or if you see things that, boy, this is important, we'd like more information, more pricing on it, just let me know and I'll focus on those. Yeah, things. I'd love to get a lot of this to the to the capital planning committee so we can start. Okay. So, so can, can I just say one thing? I, I know Bob saying no decisions, but if there's anything here that we want to put forward in a Warren article, Correct. we'd have to do that this meeting because they're due at the December 31st, I believe, and we don't meet again until after January. So if we were going to put anything on a Warren article, we would have to decide that tonight. Okay. For a special town meeting, meeting or? No, for the no, annual town meeting. For the annual town meeting. Okay. For the capital planning committee. Okay. All right. So, with that said, you know, something that I think is critical in the school and something we need to put money into every year are interior finishes and, and carpeting and flooring. So I just put a chunk of money in there that represents doing over a couple of classrooms, maybe doing some painting and that sort of thing. Right. So that, that's where that number came from. Um, the kitchen ductwork repairs. I've got an ongoing problem in the kitchen with temperature that's really troubling to the kitchen help. And I've looked at some of the diffusers off the air handling system and they're, they're badly damaged. I mean, it's a very unusual situation. I don't quite know how it happened or, or what was done there, but I really think we need to 
completely replace those diffusers and do some work on that air handling system so that it will be a little more comfortable for the folks that are working in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, during the roofing project, um, it was note, noted that the storm drains on most of the building from the courtyard and this side of the building go into the drainage swale over there. Plugged up. Kind of got shoveled out, yeah. but what really needs to be done is we need to get somebody in there with a backhoe to dig that out and then fill it with stone so it won't yeah. fill up with debris again. So that's, that's pretty much what that project is. Perfect. Um, the next project um, is from my perspective, it's a high priority for Janine. Um, we have a master clock system in this building, but it's it doesn't old. work very well. And yeah. the, the 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 master the master reset system doesn't work horribly well, and the clocks are prohibitively costly to replace. What we've been doing when when we lose a clock, we stick our regular battery clock in there. Mm -hmm. The technology now for a master clock system is is awesome. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we can we can buy a system that's got all clocks. It'll reset itself. I, you know, somebody won't have to come in here daylight savings time and reset right, them. Right. Right. Um, it's just a it's a nice system, and it, it in a school environment, it's important. Have you uh, researched vendors for that? I looked when I was out at the school committee conference. I didn't see anything out there, so I just um, didn't know. There, there's a there's a vendor that I've used in all of the schools. It's an American Time and Signal. Okay. Um, they're great people. Um, great. We, we buy rebuilt clocks for them in schools and stuff, and, yeah. and they've they've got a good system. Perfect. Um, and that that's a good number. That's a quote from them. Okay. Um, Window tent for the cafeteria. I think I'll let Janine speak to that because it, it's really her project. It's a good project. It's an important project. It's a security issue here. Yeah. That was something that we uh, looked into a couple of years ago when we were having the Four Town Safety Committee meetings. Yep. So I had brought in a company and received a quote with a recommendation from the state troopers and um, before. So it really, the figure for that is not very expensive. Um, we were even talking about it most recently when we had a training with yep. state troopers. That we wouldn't even have to go all the way up to the top window right there. Right, um, Leave that top row open. It's a fishbowl, and it, right. you know, it it's, it's concerning. Safety. So um, that's something that the police keep coming back to me for, mm -hmm. so I just would like to continue to put on the table okay. uh, that it will be considered. I will say that when this was first proposed by the police, I had a lot of anxiety about the quality of it. Because years ago, probably 20 years ago, they started using window covering for energy savings. Yep. And they had a lot of problems with it. Mm -hmm. it, didn't, it, it. After a couple of years, it looked terrible. Yep. Um, I've called a few people that have tried this new stuff, and I've gotten pretty good feedback. So I feel a lot better after okay. doing some research that it's good. And the other recommendation by the the police was to also include the office. Right. Front office. To give them privacy there yeah. as well. Is that insulated glass? Do you know? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. It is insulated. Because yes, I know sometimes putting a covering on that creates a hot box and, it, and, it, and, it's, and the seal fails sooner. But again, this isn't really self facing, <clears> so I don't think that'd be an issue. And we've talked a little about the, the entry foyer drainage. And the last item is, it's something that's going to be ongoing forever in the school. Hardware is very expensive. Mm -hmm. um, the school is, is it, it's well maintained, but it's getting to a point where it's showing some age. And all of the hardware on the doors to the exterior and, and the corridors and some of the entries to the classroom are just getting to a point where we need to start systematically doing repairs and replacements. So, you know, this, this is the thing I will probably keep coming back and back and saying we need a chunk of money to do some more of it. Um, we did do the front and rear doors, yep. and uh, I'm, I, I don't know if any of you have noticed them, but I'm very pleased with how they mm -hmm. came out. Did, did we, uh, yeah, I was just struck by, I thought we had a huge budget item around doors yeah. just in the past couple of years. I just emailed so, so. Brenda Hill to see if we have any funds left in on, on, on account at the town for our door harbor. I looked uh, when I was looking over the financials for at the end of November, I noticed there was like $9,500 in for doors at DES yeah. that hasn't been spent yet. Right. I think we okay. do have a balance there. Yeah. 
either that or I thought we'd already done all the doors. We've done some, but there's some bad ones that are safe. We did two big yeah. projects by yep. doing the front yeah. and back. Yeah, but there's some of the rear ones up. up the wing side doors, are, are um, the door by the five six in the gym is. Yeah, um, yep. Just the hardware on the on the fire doors going through the corridors is important. You know, I, a, a lot of it, a, a lot of the hardware is, is in my by the standards of what I buy today. Um, I think we can get a much better hardware. It will last longer. Yeah. yeah. Great. Can I just ask, not to dwell too much on it? It's great to hear about these projects, and this is probably for you, Janine. But on this window tint, what's the rationale for? Um, here as opposed to all the classrooms. Why are we piecemealing? Well, to do all the classrooms with, with the figure for that would be is tens of thousands. I mean, it's a you know, one-way tint. So you see out, it's mirrored when you're looking from inside. So the, the thinking is that you have, if you have all school meetings, you have all the students here at the same right. time, all the faculty, if you have a situation where there's you know, a parent or an, an issue, a family issue, or anybody that's out front, they can see everything. We're pretty vulnerable. So. The other piece is in the evening hours, saying now at 6, 6.30, if there's children in, the, in this room, we can't see anything out there, but they yep. can see all of us. Mm -hmm. During the day, it's a little different when, you know, there's, yeah. when it, it's not dark outside. So they can see them, but not quite as easily as if the lights were on. It's that kind of But does the tint work at night? Or it would be mirrored. It would be always mirrored on the outside. Even outside. when there's a stark contrast like this? Mm -hmm. We still wouldn't be able to see but out, no, but I they did. couldn't see in. Right. Even, right. even at night like that. Mm -hmm. So we have children in this building until 5.30 every night in this it's dark. Room. Yeah. And so Trooper Carmichael did come to me and, and talk to me about it as well. And this is what's going on. Yes. It's at night, it's dark, people can just see in and take any kind of notice of any All right, so these are the, the priorities that we want to think about in terms of implementing into our budget for next year, or are these things that we're looking to start doing this coming spring if we have the money, or? I'd like You're to just present going as soon as done. possible. Okay. I'll leave okay. Patty to talk about the budgeting aspect okay. of it. Okay. Because presumably there's something in the budget annually for maintenance. And so the question is what can be covered and then what do we need extra for? Our maintenance budget just gets us chucking through the year to keep the plumbing together, the heating on, the lights on. Um, so those are like our miscellaneous repairs. There's not enough in the budget to do a project unless we added it to the budget now and designated it the project. In most cases, we ever spend right. Current, yeah. current what what I find is in using the regular operating budget for almost all of the schools, um, when, by the time you're done buying paper products, cleaning products, no, yeah. dealing with little HVAC emergencies and that sort of stuff right. that comes but, up during the year, there's nothing left. The, the account we spend over in all of the schools every year that we overspend in is the account that we hire contractors to do little projects. Yeah, but I'm just thinking from a budgetary point of view, the solution is not to do this piecemeal, it's to build a larger piece into the budget Correct. so that there's a schedule that you've put together that mm -hmm. we attack every year and then on the much bigger things, we should be going to the town and we're saying getting, that's getting the, a little bit over our their five-year okay. plan. Yeah, right. exactly. One of the things that when I came five years ago um, that I noticed immediately in our budgets in all of our schools, we were severely underfunded for technology and we were yeah. severely underfunded for maintenance because the maintenance budgets were made when the buildings were brand new yeah. and in 20 years they haven't changed. That's the yeah. same amount. Right. Well, it doesn't cost the same amount to maintain a 20-year-old building as it does a one-year-old building. Right. Yeah. So those are technology, we ramp, ramp, ramp. Maintenance, it just never gets to be the priority. Right. But, we, so could we, we, could we perhaps find out what's in the door hardware account mm -hmm. so we, we know how much that is impacted and um, pursue this at the next meeting well, yeah. yeah I mean I, I mean without a, a general, general recommendation and formal project list 
right. for the recommendation. I, I'd like to have something a little bit more than just reviewing this real quickly. I didn't see Mary. Well, on the on the door hardware, if there's, if there's money in a door hardware budget, then forty we will utilize it. We should just be using it. Correct. So, okay. But yeah. In terms so, of the fi funding for it, we'd need to have a funding source and a final amount that we're authorizing. Yeah, that, that you're not able to cover out of the regular budget. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But is there anything on this list that you would like us to submit on the warrant process that we could leave until we know in April whether or not the town approved it on a warrant article? I want something larger. Yeah. Right? I would have started with the, right. I would have started with the entry foyer and the door hardware, and said, "Can we put them before the capital planning committee?" Mm -hmm. We've already done that. Sounds like the door hardware is done. Well, ninety-five hundred. Well, right. Ninety-five hundred out of fifteen. Yeah. But if we if we went back with another request for whatever the last request was for, just to say it's ongoing. Correct. To then we them. might have more than just the fifteen thousand to address some of the other areas. Forward. I mean, it might stay at 15, even though we have 9,500 remaining. We're just identifying new doors. Yeah. Upgrade. The building is 25 years old mm -hmm. or more. I can't remember. Can I make a suggestion? <laughs> yes. uh, if we do have that 95, as is, 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 um, I think so. As think Trevor is so. saying, if we take the difference between the 15 and the 95 and ask for that and the flooring money, that would be asking for about a little over $20,000 in a warrant article. Right. Flooring is something we probably wouldn't attack till summer anyway. So if we knew in April that mm -hmm. we either had the money or we didn't, if we yeah, end up not get getting bits. it, we could plan on using some school choice or some budget savings if there's enough to do the flooring projects for the summer mm -hmm. and give us enough time to bid. Because that was really the idea is once we got the roof done, we could start tackling these rooms and Get, a, get that old musty carpet out and Correct. start. I know I heard it from a lot of teachers that you know the laminate floor back in with an area rug mm -hmm. or something like that. So I think it would be a good tie-in to say now that the roof's on, we need to work on our floors mm -hmm. and our, we need to continue our work on the doors. Yep. Good idea. Okay. So I, you want something from us um, on that, or or you can just. Um, um, request that we send in the capital request the warrant article request uh, to fill it out for flooring and door repairs what, what sort of lead time would there be on a clock system a clock way? system that's an easy one and one we could do pretty quickly we could probably do that that that's one if we had the money we could do it now um, yeah. i'm guessing it would be less less than uh, three to five weeks and we don't, we wouldn't, it wouldn't have to go out to bid because it's under $10,000. So we can just go on the three quote system. You know, Ginny said that was really important yeah. when I asked her what, what, what items in the school were that needed. <clears throat> okay. I mean, that's one I'd be willing to consider now under school choice. Right. It's a good project for me to see me coming in two Sunday evenings and ten o'clock. <laughs> We're already saying. So, is there money. a motion? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just so, I mean, of, of these, that's a high priority in terms of people's daily. The clocks aren't lives. synchronized. Yeah. It, it's okay. It's it's running a tight ship with one minute between classes. It, it's really been very, very difficult for classroom teachers and faculty to operate with battery operated clocks, clocks that are don't change for daylight savings and it's, it's pretty challenging. Everyone's iPhone say the same time? <laughs> <laughs> Depends on their carrier. <laughs> The, the new phone oh. systems are awesome. They put a little antenna on the on the uh, school and it picks up the satellite from the Greenwich Mean Signal and yeah. Yeah. Just yeah, I mean I assume the technology must be yeah. light years. So okay, so um, so I'm hearing a sort of consensus around we perhaps we go forward with a clock as soon as possible if we authorize that money in a budget now. And that's what administration would approve. Yes. Appreciate okay. it, much appreciated. And then we are, have sort of a consensus that we would like you to put together roughly twenty thousand dollars stuff for a warrant article and you'd specify what that would be. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much all we're looking for. We need a vote on the school choice. So I like to have a we're doing. Yeah, just sort of having we'll summing up where we're at here. Oh, okay. motion here eventually. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so is there anything else? 
but we're not going to need to deal with the RAM what Mr. Lesko has provided us tonight, besides those two items. But we want to go forward on. I mean, is there any other work here that you'd like to do that you want us to fund now that would impact teachers' lives, students' lives, make the school the better? The window tent would be nice. I know, I I know that. that's where I'm at too with that window <laughs> tent for safety. I feel like well, how much? Is, I mean, <laughs> the other thing is, what kind of work is that? I mean, do we want that? Is that a summer thing? So there's so, weird smells here during a week when the kids are all in here. I, I mean, think they just roll. The window I don't do tents. We do it right <laughs> in the glass. But I is think it they intrusive, just. Is it intrusive, Bob? If we it, would we have like to wait till summer to put it's the window in right Well, the only the bigger issue than smell on the window tent, I think, might be temperature. Correct. But I'm not sure about that. Yeah, it's I'm an exterior application. Talk to the vendor. Or interior. I'm not interior. Positive, exactly. I don't think it's they... probably interior. It's interior. Waitley sure. has it, and yeah. it, it's, it's did attractive. They did that in the summer, though. Yeah, they did it in the summer. It's attractive. It serves So we should purpose. check with the vendor and see what they say about I temperature of the glass. I think it's inside. I think it's an interior. <clears throat> yeah. And we know it's not going to look sort of odd or garish from the outside, having half of it. You're talking about two frames or three frames? I think leave the top open. Yeah, we could leave the top open. That was what Tripper Carmichael was recommending when he was here last. Mm -hmm. But he just said it would be a cost savings and there really wasn't a need to go all the way to that top layer. But certainly that would be whatever I'd be, that would be just whatever you would recommend. Leave the top open and clear and then do the bottom three. That'd be fine. Okay. So, someone want to make a motion for maybe the clocks and the windows together? Does that make sense? Sure. I, I would make a motion to approve the expenditure up to $15,000 for window tinting and new clocks and control. I mean, if you want. Have a school choice. Second. Clocks. Available school choice. Okay. Any further discussion about that? No? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any vote? No? Unanimous? Then uh, a motion to have the administration put together something to put on the town warrant for other major repairs. I don't think, I think we ever had to just vote direct that. We just advised. Okay. Just direct us. Thank okay. you. Okay. Yep. So from our discussion, so advised. But thank you. Great. Anything else? No. No. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. I really have a good appreciate day. the help. Have yeah. A great. Great. So, so really the goal in the future though is to have sort of a, we should have license to just do this stuff. Well, that needs to be done without us trying to piecemeal it out. The Capital Planning Committee has been really looking forward to get all this stuff together so we can start getting on the town, you know, so we know what we need to spend. Big stuff, but it seems yeah. like there's also things, there is minimal. Just regular little things, yes, there's should, updates that should be being done. budget that kind of yeah. Trevor, what I was, um, what I, what I told them in Waitley is that when we do, when we submit the Warren articles, we're going to submit this as well, so Perfect. that they'll have a, um, you know, our five-year look. Great. Thank you. <coughs> okay. um, school lunch costs. Who's going to talk about that? Me. Okay, right. um, so every now and then we have to calibrate our lunch price, our paid lunch price, and I gave you um, a sheet. And if you look to the bottom where it's highlighted, mm -hmm. what the federal government gives us for a free lunch is $2.78 this year. So if you look up above, we are only paying two seventy-five. dollars So we can't be lower than what the Fed gives us. Okay. So we need to now adjust. Now we adjusted about three years ago, I believe, and it got us three years. So what we've been recommending is a 10 cent hike and that'll buy us probably two to three more years. So we're asking that we increase the price of the lunch from 275 to 285 beginning January 1st. Any discussion? Questions? Just a quick question. I noticed we had budgeted 7,000 for a school lunch program in 17 and only did 1,605. Should this have similar results that we'd be in the 2,000, $2,500 range well, to supplement to the budget? It's gonna be a little, well, hopefully, we'll do a better job collecting during the year so we don't have any bad debt at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. But from September to December, when this price kicks in, we're gonna to have to pay three cents a lunch for every paid lunch that was served between September mm -hmm. and uh, because we're we've got to we've got to subsidize the cost till the fee increase kicks in. 
Right. So in other words, we should have done this. Right, but they don't tell you until after school starts, so I don't know how the they're going They don't tell they us don't the tell rate that they're going to do. Yeah. So we, want, we don't want to charge everyone retroactively. No, 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 no. Please send to the check for I wouldn't like to do that. <laughs> Okay. Any motion or vote on that? Okay. Uh, so we'll put the money in for the motion lights. Motion to increase the school lunch prices to two dollars and eighty-five cents as recommended. Second. All right. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 again. Thank you. Such a collegial group. Ms. Kyle, would you notify parents? That yeah, I just made a note first. Thank you. Yep. Ariana. Should be going out. I mean, geez, get your phone out. Type it in. Robocall. <laughs> Tweet Robo it. Call. Tweet it. Yeah. Power school. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bus driver training so, procedures. I'm happy to see this. So um, there, were, there have been some questions um, as of late with a couple other school committees. So we put this together and we gave it to all our school committees about what happens, uh, how our bus drivers get, say, uh, get trained around safety procedures. So what we did um, was we took it right out of their training manual. And, and right now to get a bus driver's license, you need 60 hours of instructional training. And every year to get your license renewed, um, you have to have eight additional hours. Our transportation company, Gripco, um, they have two certified trainers on staff that provide that eight hours. And in addition to those eight hours, uh, we as the school district provide training to the drivers on our anti-bullying curriculum and also our, our nurse leader gives them medical emergency training, how to use an EpiPen, things like that. For the first time this year, the um, state troopers, uh, Trooper Carmichael, came and asked if we would like to have our drivers have a school bus security, and that's going to happen. They're doing a presentation this Friday at Frontier Regional uh, about school bus security. So that's what that's how our bus drivers keep our students safe. Do does the school district um, or should the school district we don't um, get something from? Our bus company certifying that they have in fact done that training that they're supposed to do? Well, they wouldn't get their licenses renewed, and then they didn't get their licenses renewed. They have to get their licenses renewed like every year. They have to get their physical every year. So and if they don't do that, they can't get their license. And if they don't have a license, then our Gripco can't let them drive. No, no, no. But I, saw, I, I gather that part, but I thought you said something about that Gripco has to also give them an additional eight hours. Right. right. And he's so. got to certify that for them when they go to get their license. So okay. as long as I have a valid okay. driver's license. Okay. I'm assuming assume that the done. eight hours is, is complete. Okay. Okay. And you get valid, you get copies of the licenses and stuff? Uh, new drivers, I do. I don't get them every year, but I would, um, Mr. Gripko is not going to put a driver behind the wheel that doesn't have a license. Obviously, yeah. Yeah. They, they yeah, they are. So all our new drivers, I get a driver's license when I'm running their quarry and get doing their fingerprints. Correct. Okay, good. But we can make that a requirement. If you would like a copy of each driver's license every year, I could make that a requirement. I, no, I don't think much you have one. If I have a driver's license? I can't no, drive No, if you have copies of your driver's oh. license. <laughs> I certainly don't need to say no. I don't. No, I don't. Okay, anybody have any questions or concerns about that? No? I'm glad that they're doing it. Yes, yeah, obviously it's been in the news. Way. Um, so there's an amendment to the instructional assistance contract. Please uh, tell us about <laughs> that. Went. I'm doing everything. <laughs> like I'm going to hand this to you, and uh, you need to sign it. But let Patty explain it to you. So in the last negotiation, um, the IAs who work in specialized programs or with uh, have specialized duties because of the children they care for. Um, we wanted to give them extra compensation. Um, and so what they came up with was an additional hour a day. But the way that the contract was written, it says at the sole discretion of the superintendent, and the retirement board does not like the word discretion because if wages are discretionary, they're not pensionable. So we, explain, we went to them and explained to their attorney that the intent is not that the wages are discretionary, but who earns them 
is the discretionary fund. Well, they didn't care. Um, they wanted it in, they wanted the word discretion taken out of the sentence with the wages. So we went and worked with our attorney and with uh, Sue Siegel, the Union 38 rep, came up with some language. Um, and uh, it was never our intent to make these non-pensionable earnings for our employees. Doesn't make sense to give them that, and then when they go to retire, that amount of money is not included in their allocation. Sure. Um, so we wanted to correct that for our employees. Um, so this is the agreement, um, and it does need to be signed uh, by our chair, and then I will send it over to the retirement board, and everything will be good. Um, sounds good. Just a quick question on the, the word. It talks about they will have added to their regular weekly rate stipend equivalent to their hourly rate times the number of their regularly scheduled days. Correct. That sounds like they're getting their hourly rate. The times. one hour a day. Okay. Doesn't so their stipend is one hour a day. Okay. Because you could read that the, their stipend is their hourly rate times the number of their regularly scheduled days. That's so they work says. seven hours but they get paid for eight. This is not the way that I would have structured this. Yeah. But this is what the committee agreed to. Uh, is that determined just by um, the position that they're in, or is there extra training that they do? It's it determined do? by, and, and we're working on this language, and actually Sue Siegel and I have drawn up um, a, another agreement that says if the instructional assistant works in a substantially separate program where a student is removed from the classroom 60 percent of the day students who cannot be in a regular classroom or if they're working with medically fragile students students that need uh, special feeding uh, special tubes um, post uh, pre-k incontinence changing diapers on teenagers that so, you know, we really, we, we really sat down and cleared up exactly what superintendent's discretion is, and we came to an agreement together on what we think that is, and it's going to go out to the principals. And do they have any um, additional training that others? Some, I know some, of it. some that are working with our ABA students do, do have. And the medical ones. And, and that, medical that was what we were um, after. Because those jobs are above and beyond. Yep. Asking, we're asking them to do things that are not. Okay. So um, we probably need a vote on this to approve the um, memorandum of agreement here to make a technical adjustment to the contract specifying that the extra hour. I will make a motion to approve the uh, memorandum of agreement between the Deerfield School Committee and the Union 38 Instructional Assistance Association as recommended by council. And administration. As recommended by council. Okay. Second that. Second. Second. Okay. Harry seconds that. Any further discussion? No. All in favor? Uh, still I'm not clear on that, but it doesn't. So I said it's recommended by council. Thank you. Yeah. I just, when we it finish feels up like with it this, I'm going to make hour. a recommendation back to council that he add something okay. to the future contract. Aye. 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 Okay. Oh, oh yeah. So I think we're Mary, did you vote? Yes. Yes. I think it's unanimous. <clears throat> if we if we could make a recommendation under number five to the to council or the union in council that the um, their rate weekly rate a stipend equivalent to one hour times their hourly rate. Times the number of their regular schedule. Well, hopefully, next time it's going to be totally different. Right? Well, there's a differential. It is, but somehow, <laughs> somehow we need to note that it's one hour because right now I agree with David and Trevor that it reads, literally reads, 
they can get a stipend essentially equivalent to their full week salary for working one extra hour a day. Yeah, I don't, I don't put it that way, but they right. that, right? They, they I do. Their hourly rate, they're going to use many of the days they do. Right, so one hour times five days, which is five hours at yeah. their rate, which is what rate. it is. Gotcha. Thank you. Good. But I can understand, okay. and, and I think I think that there's, you know, when we when we go back in 2019, there's a lot of little things that that could be mm -hmm. more clear. And this game certainly. Well, I'm happy to give them the support they need because I know they're working very oh, hard yes. doing um, this stuff. It's not easy. That's what I'm yep. Okay. So. Uh, don't have any special reports. Any collaborators, Jan? Yeah, I don't know if we have a meeting yet. Yeah. Okay. Um, Principal of Park? Yeah. Uh, you should have a copy of that. Just a couple of things we'd like to highlight that have been happening or might be coming up. Um, one in particular is that we have, I, I always am impressed when we have students who take initiative. And we have two fifth grade students, uh, Meredith Fidel and Emma Graveline, who have, they made a proposal to their fifth grade teachers that they wanted to um, do a community service act. And it was to adopt a family in fifth grade. So have the fifth grade students adopt a family. So the girls worked on a letter that was going to be sent home. And a checklist were made up and given to each class of things that they would need. And I just think it's a, it's a terrific Very initiative nice. on those two young ladies' parts, and we definitely want to support it. So I just wanted to highlight their work. Have they selected a family yet, or, or would that be in, I know sometimes there's. Kayla, do you know if they've selected a family? Yeah, check Caleb's binder. It's in there. I, I saw the. I <laughs> yeah, saw the so we've, we've, the family's okay. been selected, oh, and the nice. lists have gone out. Wonderful. Thank yep. You. Um, a couple of things, uh, dates if you, you're able to attend. We have our winter concert, which is Tuesday the 13th at 9.30. So if you're um, available, please stop by. It's always really wonderful to yeah. see that. And then uh, we have an annual event at Yankee Candle on, at 8 o'clock on the 19th. And Janet Ryan leads the fifth and sixth grade course. So they do some holiday songs. And it's really just puts you in the holiday spirit. So it's just a nice morning. And, Last maybe about a half an hour, 45 minutes. Okay. It's a good way to start off the week. Yeah. And I just want to thank Jess Rigolow for the book fair that she organized for this week. Yes. Um, tonight was the evening night. The parents could come and families and shop. And we had a lot of volunteers from parents and teachers. So I want to thank their efforts too as well. <coughs> Our team is going to talk about two other items we have. Today we uh, conducted the interviews for the early childhood behavioral interventionist position. And we're hoping to uh, we will be moving a candidate from the superintendent tomorrow. Uh, teachers are involved in that process. We have pre-K and K and OT and director of early uh, childhood education. Okay. And uh, tomorrow at the faculty meeting, all staff and faculty will be um, hearing Molly Bremer from Sunderland Elementary School doing some CPI or uh, de-escalation. Uh, techniques for the teachers when we get trained in uh, what that verbal escalation may look like, questions for refusal, and what are well, questionnaire refusal, question reduction all the way down, and what are some of the strategies that you know they can utilize, or even where you could define that you know, That would be a great training. Molly's great. She had um, conducted a training a few weeks ago for the IAs on a Friday over the week. Feedback was incredibly positive with the high numbers and the increase that we're seeing in students with severe behaviors. Mm -hmm. We think this is something that's really important and it's important for everyone to have the training and the language so that we can support our students and support each other at the same time. Right. And that's all we have for this one. Great. Thank you. Thank you. And superintendent report. I'm going to make it short this week, this month. Sure. It's, uh, it, and one of the reasons is over at Central Office, we're really busy getting ourselves really immersed in the moving, the uh, moving program uh, that we're engaging in to uh, Frontier. So we have um, boxes already delivered with the tape and the, you know, the uh, markers 
we're going to be identifying all the pieces that are being moved, all the furniture pieces that are being moved. Well, meanwhile, we're working with Bob Lesko and Scott Hall very closely on installing the phone system, making sure the electrical drops will be ready for us, and um, that the rooms that we're moving into have been, they're, they're empty now, but they need to be burnished, the floors need to be redone, the windows need to be, you know, there's some sprucing up that really needs to be done. Uh, the movers are going to be here on Friday, December 23rd. They'll be at Christian Lane moving the furniture, and Monday, uh, December 26th. So we will be moving to the new place and semi-operational um, on the 27th. However, the office will be kind of closed for traffic until uh, January 3rd. We'll reopen and we'll be uh, full speed ahead in our new digs. So that's, that's really taking a lot of our time. And we're finding a lot of things you know, that we had uh, working, uh, working on, on that. So it's, it's tough because we had six months to prepare, but we really couldn't do anything until now. Now that yes. we're getting really close to the time. And as you know, our, our content staff, they need to work right up until they take that computer away, and then they need to <laughs> run over work. there and then plug that computer in and keep going. Yeah. The payroll still needs to go up. And I don't know who decided to move during budget season, but. <laughs> <laughs> it so we, it was uh, like a challenge. Me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so consequently, uh, we'll do it, and it'll be fine. It, it will work out well. I think closer we get more excited, a lot of people are, are, are becoming. And it will be a great fresh start for all of us. So, one of the things that I plan to do uh, with the Frontier uh, School Committee after we move in and we settle, I'd like to put together or call together the building subcommittee to talk about what what we're going to do with that weight. Mm -hmm. what, how can we uh, best uh, either utilize it? Will we keep it? Will we use it? What should we do? How do we do it? It certainly cannot be a one-person decision. So I'll put the uh, committee back together. And, we'll work with the and uh, as Patty uh, referred to, the bus safety, it is, it's becoming, um, it's just up there in the front burner now because of all the, the tragedies that have happened. And, and we realize that the bus drivers are having, you know, a lot of, they're, they're, and you know we all drive, so our focus really needs to be on the road and the other people. They've got 30, 40 kids in the back doing all kinds of things. They're just doing all kinds of things. And it's hard to uh, be responsible for every little thing that happens between the kids. If, you know, they do this or they get up or they get down. So what we want to do is find a curriculum. There's several out there, but find one that really speaks to our kids that will help them understand the importance of being good bus passengers. Mm -hmm. That uh, really will help the, uh, the safety on the bus overall. Uh, we plan to use the curriculum along with a review of all the safety procedures and the expectations for students when they're riding on the bus. So that is going to be our plan going into the new year. We really need to help the students understand that they have an important job in their own lives. It's hard. There's no specific supervision. There's no activity they are supposed to be doing. They're just sitting there. With the friends and the bus driver trying to drive. I think the bus driver is having, you know, I think it's a good job. And, and we're very grateful. We, uh, like Patty has set up that training, and uh, we made cards for all our bus drivers for the holiday season, nice. and we're very grateful to them. We're giving them donuts and coffee. All right. Even though they're not police off. <laughs> They'll be grateful, I'm sure. It's a tough job. It is. It is. I'm glad you're doing this work. And I'm sure it's good to purge when you're on your way to a new building, too. This kind of stuff. Well, yeah. The only time that I clean my office is if I When you move. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a good time, Patty. And, and, and if Patty and I have been having conversations about ways we can start, because we will be moving to a more paperless system, yeah. but it's hard. It's it hard is. to change all of those things. So we're going to go slow and go fast and change some of the things that we 
other people can go paperless because they put the paper in my room. Here, <laughs> <laughs> Penny, you fuck. You hang on to that file. So it's like everyone else is paperless but us. Yeah. Okay, all right, thank you. Any questions? Uh, okay, no? Okay, um, I think we're done then.